Hi everyone, hope you all must be doing great. So in the last lecture, we have started our PGBP revision and this is the second class for PGBP. We know that we have section from 28 to 44 in this chapter and section 28 is the charging section. Do you remember I was um, also telling you about the contents that we have to do from section 28 till 44. So 28 was the charging section of PGBP. It says that which, which type of income is taxable under this particular head. So we have seen different types of income which are taxable under this head. Second is section 29 that is computation of PGPP. How you will compute your PGPP income. So we have to start with our net profit. Then we have to look at your expenses side. Any expense which is debited and it is not allowed under section 30 to 37 should not be allowed and it should be added back to the net profit. Third point is that you have to look at your income side. And if there is any income which is credited to PNL account, but that should not fall under PGVP head, it should go in any other head, or whether that income is exempt, then you have to take out that income, right? You will subtract that income, which should not covered under PGVP. Last thing is that you have to look at your information. And in, in case if there is any income which should be your part of your PGVP and you have not considered that. Please consider that income also. Same way, if there is any expenses in the information which should be debited to PL account, it should be covered under section anywhere between 30 to 37, and you have not debited it that expense, then it is allowed. You should consider that expense. Please bring that expense also and subtract from your income, right? So that you can get your PGBP. So section 29 is computation. We understand how we will compute our PGBP in, uh, income. Now, the important part is that we are, we were doing section 30 to 37. This is one part where we will discuss from section 30 till 37 that what are these expenses? What are these deductions which are allowed under PGBP? We have already covered two of the sections. One was section 30. Section 30 tells us that if there is any building which you are using that building in your business or profession as the case may be, and if there is any rent of that building, it should not be a notional rent. Remember, it should be an actual rent. It should be an actual rent. So if there is any rent of that building or any repair expense related to that building, any insurance premium or even rates and taxes of building, we understand that there are municipal taxes of building. So if there is any expense related to that building, which you use in your business, it could be your factory, go down, etc. So that expense is allowed under section 30. Whether we have paid that expense or we have not paid the expense, is it allowed? The answer is it depends upon the method of accounting, which is followed by the SAC. If the SAC is following mercantile system of accounting, then all expenses are allowed on due basis. That is mercantile basis, accrual basis. And if the SAC is following cash basis of accounting, then expenses or income should be taken on only on payment basis or reset basis, right? But yes, we have very important section 43B also, which we will be discussing. Uh, in this portion, deductions not allowed. Section 43B is a very important section. We will discuss that also. It says that there are certain list of expenses. There are some six or seven expenses, which and there is an amendment also in this section. I'll tell you when I'll be discussing 43B with you. So section 43B says that there are certain expenses which are allowed only if it is actually paid up to the due date of R. So one of the expenses, any type of tax which is payable to government. Government here means central government, state government or local authority. So if you have to pay any type of tax to the government, any type of tax, so that should, that tax will only be taken as your expense if you have actually paid it. If you have not paid it, then it is, if you have not made the payment, then it is not allowed. Section 43B is a very important section. We'll discuss that. So because it covers first point of section 43B says any type of taxes. So let's say the SSE is following mercantile system and there are certain taxes related to that building rates and taxes related to, to that building, which is not yet paid. Although it was due, but it was not yet paid. So section 43B will disallow that expense, right? So it says section 43B says that certain expenses are allowed only on actual payment, right? You remember 43B also. Section 31. It deals with any expense which is related to your plant and machinery or furniture. But sorry, I have said any expense. No, it is specifically, it is specifically repairs of plant and machinery or furniture or insurance of plant and machinery and furniture. Repairs and insurance. 
let's say if there is any plant machinery let's say there is a business and they are using any plant machinery that is rented they have to pay rent of that machine is it a business expense the answer is yes because that machine you are using in your business and if you have to pay rent that is a business expense right but is that allowed under section 31 the answer is the plant machinery furniture is allowed but 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 only repairs and insurance is allowed that i agree that is the business expense rent or other expense related to plant machinery and furniture but that will not be covered under section 31 we will see in some other section i'll tell you section 37 it is covered so here in 31 only repairs and insurance related to machines or furniture right now again a very important section section 32 32 is depreciation so we understand this is again a very interesting topic depreciation and very important as well from the examination point of view and practical also but right now we are doing revision so it's more on uh, from examination point of view so depreciation a very interesting topic section 32 okay let's revise uh, let's revise it uh, carefully and uh, we'll go smoothly over here we'll go a little bit uh, not that much fast we'll go a little bit slow also so depreciation we understand that in accounting we also know there is a treatment of depreciation in accounts also but in income tax act as per section 32 the depreciation calculation is a little bit different not very much different but yes little bit dip different so first thing first, you should know about some basic things about depreciation as per section 32. You understand that we have different types of method in accounting. We have different types of method of charging depreciation. Let's say one is WDV method and there are different names also of WDV method. Uh, written down value method has different names like reducing balance method or we have a diminishing balance method also, right? Diminishing method also. So we can say WDV method. So one is WDV method in accounting. Second is SLM method. These two methods are very common. But yes, we have some other methods also in accounting like double declining method, double de diminishing method, sum of digit method. There are many methods in accounting. But here, when you will be calculating depreciation as per section 32 in income tax, please remember that the only method which we will be using is WDV method. We will be using uh, is WDV method. We will not be using any other method. First thing first. Yes, the only exception is when you will be computing depreciation for power generating units. For them, SLM method is allowed. Only for them, SLM method is allowed, not for anyone else. Right. So SLM method is only for power generating units and that two power generating units have an option. They can use, they can choose WDV method also. Right. So I'll discuss power generating units separately. Let's first discuss the, uh, section 32 on a common basis, on a general basis. So I have uh, told you that there are different methods, but in income tax, we will take only WDV method. S only SLM is there, but that too. Uh, for only for power generating right okay first is wdb method second difference between accounting and income tax is that in income tax we don't charge depreciation on individual assets rather we charge depreciation on block of assets in accounts we charge depreciation on individual asset but here in income tax act as per section 32 when you are using WDV method and most of the time we have to use WDV method only. So in WDV, while using WDV method, you don't charge depreciation on individual assets. You charge depreciation on block of assets, on block of assets. Now the question arises, sir, what is block of assets? Simple block of assets means assets belonging to same category with same rate of depreciation. I'm repeating. What is block of assets? It's mentioned in your book also. So what is block of assets? If you come to page number 5.4, this book is easily available on the website. If you go to download section, you will get this book. So page 5.4, we have what is block of assets? Block of assets means assets belonging to same category. So we have different categories, five categories we have. What are the categories? Building is one category, plant and machinery is another category, furniture and fittings is another category, ships and intangible assets. Should I repeat it once again? So first is 
first is building second is plant machinery third is your furniture and fittings fourth is ships and fifth and last category is uh, intangible assets so if there is any asset which belongs to same category with same rate of depreciation because in these categories we have different rates also in building we have general rate 10 percent for some type of building which are used for residential purpose or guest house we have five percent for temporary building we have 40 percent rate for machinery what the general rate what is the general rate for plant machinery i'm using for wdb method right the rate of depreciation is 15 percent general rate but yes there are certain plant machinery where 30 percent is also charged some for some 40 percent is also charged i'll tell you that also furniture and fitting what is the rate do you remember that 10 percent all furniture and fittings it has only one rate 10 percent ships all the ships have only one rate 20 percent intangible assets as 25 percent so it is easy for furniture and fittings we have only one rate 10 for ships we have only one rate 20 intangible assets we have only one rate 25 percent but yes for buildings we have three types of rates generally the rate is 10 percent right so i have also mentioned this everything over here on next page if you come to 5.5 page i have mentioned it here as well for building the general rate is 10 percent so if you have in your business if you have a shop or you have a showroom it's a godown of the sac or a factory of the sac it's all generally the rate of dep depreciation building is 10 percent if nothing is mentioned please charge 10 percent rate on building but yes you understand in business we have some residential buildings also that we give to our employee as a rent free accommodation or a concessional rent accommodation or we have certain guest houses also so on that on such type of building which are of residential nature although we use it in our business for employees and for guest houses purpose so for that for such building we have five percent rate right and for temporary buildings we have 40 percent rate so what is block of asset block of assets are group of assets club together which belongs to same category with same rate of depreciation so let's say we have assessi has one shop in his business he has one shop he has one go down and he has one factory so he has three buildings in business right so he has shop he has go down he has factory so he has three buildings in business we understand these are not residential building these are not temporary building so these are all general buildings 10 percent rate of depreciation is it same category the answer is yes sir all three things are buildings all these three types of buildings are uh, all these three assets are buildings right same category buildings right shop go down and factory okay is it same rate of depreciation on all these three the answer is yes so that is the uh, that is why they will fall under one block they will fall under one block so it will fall under building block same category same rate of depreciation but yes if we have some uh, guest houses or we have some residential accommodation which we have given to our employees so on those building it will will it come in this block no although it is of same category building but they have different rate it's a five percent so let's say we have five houses which we have given to our managers managers are our employees we have given it to them as a rent free accommodation or concessional rent accommodation as the case may be so if those building which we have given which we which are getting used for residential purpose although we are using it for business but that is being used not commercially it is only given to the employees right so on that building all these five if we have five houses all these five houses will be grouped together as a block of assets because they all fall under five percent rate right tell me let's say we have building of ten percent go down shop etc we have furniture also that is also ten percent can furniture 10 percent and buildings 10 percent can group together as a single block of asset the answer is no the rates are rate of depreciation is same 10 percent guys uh, category is different right so it should be same category with same rate of depreciation you understand what is block of asset so let let me come back first of all i have told you that as per section 32 we charge depreciation we charge depreciation by using wdv method we don't take any method but yes slm is there but only specifically for power generating units otherwise wdv method second point second important point is that we don't charge depreciation on individual assets we charge depreciation on block of asset block of assets is same category with same rate of depreciation next important point is that in accounting in accounting 
and here as per section 32 there is a bit difference what third difference is in accounting let's say we have purchased a asset let's say we have purchased a machine right during the year we have purchased it and we have used it for 11 months in the first month we have not purchased it let's say uh, that our year is from april to march so we have purchased it after april let's say from first on first of may we have purchased it when we have started using it so we have used that machine for 11 months so in accounting if we are doing accounting subject we will charge depreciation for 11 months if we have, if we would have used it for 10 months we will charge depreciation for 10 months 8 months 9 months as the case may be so in accounting we charge depreciation uh, from the date we date uh, it is put to use and for the remaining period if it is for 11 10 or so whatever the months are here in income tax act as per section 32 we either charge depreciation for the entire year that is called full depreciation either we will charge full depreciation or we will charge half depreciation for six months six months we can say half depreciation right or we will not charge depreciation at all so there are three points either if depreciation would be charged either it will be for the entire year that is called full depreciation if it is not full it could be half it, it should not be for seven months eight months nine months no either full or half or we will not charge depreciation at all so if i'll show you i have written this also on this page 5.4 under section 32, the depreciation is charged either for entire year, that is full depreciation, or we charge depreciation for six months, or we do not charge depreciation at all. Right? Got it? So, first thing was I told you WDV method we will use, only SLM could be used for power generating. Second, block of assets, not on individual assets when we are using WDV method. When we are using WDV method on block of assets, please charge depreciation on block of assets. If you are if you are charging depreciation by using SLM method, if SLM method is being charged, uh, you are using uh, this uh, method for power generating, then block of asset criteria is not there. Block of asset is only when you are using WDV method, and generally we use WDV method, so it is block. But if assessi is a power generating unit where slm depreciation is being adopted then please charge depreciation on individual assets right is this is clear to you so on uh, when you are using wdb method please on block of assets on slm we take individual basis okay uh next thing is that i was telling you either we will charge depreciation uh, for full for half or for net let's say we have purchased any asset let's say we have purchased a machine and we have not used this asset at all we have not started using this asset at all we will not charge depreciation we will not charge depreciation until we have started using the asset we call it the asset should be put to use if the asset is put to use then we can charge depreciation if the asset was never put to use during the year please don't charge depreciation. So I am saying that if let's say this is previous year, this is previous year, 23, 24, right? It's, it starts from 1st April 23 till 31st March 24. So let's say Assessi has purchased a machine let's say of rupees 10 lakh on 15th of june 2023 that is this year they have purchased a machine of rupees 10 lakh but in this year they have never put to use it is not even opened they have not opened the package also and it is not put to use we will not charge depreciation the depreciation will be nil we will not charge depreciation right we will not charge depreciation the depreciation will be nil so i was saying that either we will charge full we will charge half or we will not charge so this is the case when the asset is never put to use we will not charge depreciation let's say in this year in this year we have not never the machine was never put to use although we have purchased it but we have not put to use in next year 
let's say this is previous year 24 25 and in this year also we have not yet used the asset this was never used in this year also please do not charge any depreciation until and unless the asset is put to use you will not charge depreciation in second year also if it is not used you will not charge depreciation i believe that this is clear to you okay second thing is that when you will be charging half depreciation that we call 50 percent depreciation we can call six months depreciation altogether it is half depreciation so when you will be charging half depreciation so half depreciation there are two conditions and both of them should be satisfied the first condition is the asset should be used first of all the asset should be used that is the reason you are charging depreciation right the asset should be used but for less than 180 days it should be used but for less than 180 days that is 179 or less of course you have used it that is the reason you are charging it if you have never used it of, uh, obviously the depreciation would be nil in that case but half depreciation you will be charging if it is used for less than 180 days and second condition also plus it is used in the same year when it is acquired it is used in the same year when it is acquired if both these conditions are satisfied simultaneously there is a plus over here i am writing and also if both these conditions are satisfied then you will you can claim half depreciation then you can claim half depreciation right if these conditions are not satisfied if these condition is not satisfied then half depreciation will not be charged in that case full depreciation will be charged first of all let me analyze it more less than 180 days you understand it should be 179 days or less okay first of all tell me let's say a machine is purchased let me take this example a machine is purchased on 15th june 2023 it is purchased and also put to use put to use on 16th of november 2023 it is put to use on 16th of november put to, uh, on 2023 please tell me depreciation will be there yes sir because it is now we have started using it on 16th November, we have used it. On 16th November, we have used it. And then we have not used it. Because on 16th November, there was some uh, work we have used. We have started using it. And th then on 17th November, we have not used it. 18th November, we have not used it. Entire November, you have not used it. December, January, February, March, you have never used it. So tell me how many days this has been used. How many days in this year it is used? So only one day. From 16th November 2023, it is only one day, right? No. Here, please remember, once the asset is put to use, once the asset is put to use, then all subsequent days will be counted. All subsequent days will be counted. It is not so that only that day when you are using it, it is getting used. No, all subsequent days will be counted, whether you are on th those subsequent days you are using it or not. It's the same way. Let's say you have purchased any machine in your house. Let's say if you have purchased a ceiling fan, if you have purchased a ceiling fan and today you uh, have uh, purchased a ceiling fan, you have also installed that ceiling fan and you have used that ceiling fan. And the next day you, ha you are not using it. On, on other day you are not using it. And for the entire month, rest of the month, you have not used it. So is it if someone will come and he will ask you that how old your, your fan is, you will say that it is one day old or it's one month old you will say it's one month old because you have already used it a month back although you have not used it for the remaining uh, part of the month or remaining part or uh, remaining days you have not used it but it is one month old right so once the asset is put to use all subsequent days will be counted right so if it is used on 16th november all subsequent days is counted and practically it is not possible right there are so many assets in organization imagine please imagine it practically there are so many assets in an organization is it practically feasible 
to count to keep a track on each and every asset yes today it is being used someone has switched on this fan or switched off this fan no it's practically not possible so once the asset is put to use all subsequent days should be counted right so please count all subsequent days and if it is less than 180 days that is one set if it is exact 180 no it should be less than 180 so if it is less than 180 one this condition is satisfied then please look at the second condition also is it used in the same year yes sir it is used on 16 november 2023 this year is it acquired also in this year the answer is yes sir it is also acquired in this year then these both the conditions are satisfied let's say if it is used for less than 180 days but it is acquired in some other year then half depreciation will not lie in that case right so let's say if i tell you i tell you with the same example i am uh, referring to the same example if you have purchased the machine of 10 lakh on 15th june 2023 and you have never used it you have never used it in this year how much depreciation will be charged in this year so in previous year 2023 24 you have never used it this asset nil depreciation now in the next year let's say the next year is previous year 24 25 let's say and you have used this asset you have used this asset for the first time in this year Let's say on 31st March 2025, you have used it that too on the very last day. I'm taking a very extreme example that in this year, you have used this asset on the very last day. So tell me how many days it is being used in this year. So only one day because 31st March 2025 was the last day of the year. It is used on this date. Okay. That is less than 180 days. Answer is yes. In this year, will you charge depreciation? Of course, because you have used it, then we will charge depreciation. Is the second condition getting satisfied? The answer is no. It is used in this year. It is used in this year, but it was not acquired in this year. It was acquired in some other year, right? It was acquired in some earlier previous year. So this condition was not satisfied. So in that case, in this year, will you be charging half depreciation? No. In this year, you will be charging the full depreciation because depreciation will be charged anyhow. You have used it. Half depreciation condition is not satisfied. So in that case, you will be charging your full depreciation. Right. And if you ask me if any asset is used for 180 days or more, then there is no problem as such. Full depreciation. Sir, it is used only for seven months. Should we charge for seven months? No, it is not account. <laughs> I have already uh, made it clear to you. Either we will charge depreciation for the entire year, half year or nil. Right. Got it. Okay. Please understand for plant machinery, general rate is 15%. Generally, appliances, motor vehicle and all, we will charge 15% rate. But if these motor vehicles are used in a business where we have a business of higher hiring of motor vehicle, we have goods carriage vehicle business or any other business where we um, give motor vehicle on hire, in that case, on such motor vehicle, we will charge 30% rate of depreciation, right? Computers compu and computer accessories, printers, UPS, scanner, these are computer accessories. On, on all this 40 percent rate is depreciation would be allowed books if it is annual publication also or it is normal professional books also 40 percent rate right these are important computers and books are important computer uh, uh, um, accessories is also important on aeroplanes and pollution control equipment it is also 40 percent but aeroplanes and pollution control equipment generally examiner don't ask this but still you should remember this is also covered under 40 percent rate Furniture and fitting, ships and intangible assets we have already covered. Intangible assets, the rate of depreciation is 25%. Tell me the uh, any of the example of, you cannot tell me, but still, just remember any of the example of intangible asset. So first example is goodwill. Goodwill, we will not never charge depreciation. No, please don't charge depreciation on goodwill. We can charge depreciation on copyrights, patents or any other intangible assets, except goodwill. Please, goodwill is not to be included here. Please do not charge depreciation on goodwill. This can come in your MCQ. On goodwill, we will not, not charge depreciation. Because generally, um, our lawmakers believe that uh, initially we used to charge depreciation on goodwill, but some two years back now, they have excluded goodwill from this def definition. Please don't charge depreciation on goodwill. Why? Because lawmakers believe that generally the value of goodwill keep, keeps on increasing. The reputation of the business generally keeps on increasing, right? There might be exceptions also, but generally it keeps on increasing. So we'll never charge depreciation on goodwill. Please remember that goodwill part also. So I've already discussed when you will charge uh, nil depreciation if the asset is never put to use nil. 
right? If the asset is put to use but less than 180 days and plus it is acquired and used in the same year, then half depreciation. In other cases, full depreciation. Got it? Now the question is, how do you compute depreciation? See, I have already discussed that we compute depreciation block wise. Same types of asset grouped together that is belonging to same category with same rate of depreciation. They would be blocked. They would be kept together. So how we will be charging depreciation? Let's say we have five blocks. So we will be doing computation five times, right? Because for every block, we should do a separate calculation. Practically, it happens that uh, a business has so many assets. So they have two, three, four, five blocks also. But in exams, generally maximum one or max to max two blocks can be there. Generally, it is one or two, right? Sometimes it could be three, but generally they ask you about depreciation. Either they will give you one block or two blocks. That's that it is. Okay. So let's say uh, I've taken a block and the method is same. Method is same for the, all the blocks. But yes, if there is a building block of 10% and there is a building block of 5%, and there is a plant and machinery block of 30%. So you have to compute this particular method separately for each block. The method of computation is same. The method of computation is same, but yes, you have to calculate your depreciation block wise. So first of all, what you will start with, you will start with what is the WDV of the block as, the, as on the beginning of the year, as of beginning of the year. So we have Previous year 23 24. So, beginning of the year is 1st of April 2023. So, whatever is the block, WDV of the block at the beginning of the year, let's say it's our new business. At the beginning of the year, we don't have the block. We have purchased some assets during the year. Then it's fine. As on uh, the beginning of the year, you can write in that case, you can write as nil because there was no block at all. Right. But yes, if there was the block value at the beginning of the year, you start with this one WDV of the block at the beginning of the year. If you have um, acquired any asset which is belonging to this block. If you have acquired any asset which should form part of this block, then you will make it part of this block by adding it. So please add additions during the year or I can say acquisitions during the year. So let's say you have a block of plant and machinery and there were three machines initially. In, in the opening balance, there is three machines. Let's say the value of the three machine was 10 lakh. And let's say you have acquired a new machine in this year. You have acquired either a new machine or a second hand machine, but for your business, it is an addition to the block, right? So if you have acquired any plant machinery, which is related to 15%, if you have acquired any plant machinery, which is related to 40%, please don't bring it into this block because that plant machine, if you have purchased a computer, so it should go in that block to which that rate belongs to. So it was if it is plant machinery of 40% and you have purchased a computer, please take that computer in that 40% block. Please don't take it over here. Don't bring it over here, right? Okay. So whatever is the opening value, let's say you have three machines in the opening and the value was 10 lakh and you have purchased one more machine, let's say M4 for rupees 4 lakh. So it will be added in your block. So your block value will become 14 lakh, right? And let's say if you have sold any of the asset, if you have sold or disposed any of the asset, which, which is which was the part of this block. And now in this year, you have sold it or disposed it. So whatever the money you have received it the while selling after selling the asset or after disposing the asset, the money which you have received it, please subtract that. Right. We have to subtract the money which you have received it. Right. So let's say the opening balance was 10 lakh. The opening value was 10 lakh of the block. And you have purchased one more machine M4 for rupees 4 lakh and you have sold some of the machine also. Let's say of rupees 2 lakh you have sold it, please subtract it, right? So this is the method and how, then you will get WDV at the end for charging depreciation. You will get this is the value that is WDV at the end for charging depreciation, right? And then you will charge depreciation as per section 32. Now, now. First of all, when you will be charging depreciation, you have to ask a question from yourself. Whether this value, this closing balance, WDV at the end of charging depreciation, that is WDV at the end of the year for charging depreciation, how you have received it? Opening value plus additions minus money received on sale. So this is the WDV at the end. Now you have to charge depreciation. But at the time when you are charging depreciation, please ask something, some questions from uh, yourself. Whether this value contains any asset which is purchased during the year, whether this value contains any asset which is purchased during the year. And if it is purchased, 
please keep it separately please keep it separately and the remaining portion separately right let me give you an example let's say this is plant and machinery a uh, 15% block and i am talking about previous year 23 24 got it so let's say the format is same for all the blocks wdv at the beginning of the year let's say you have machine 1 machine 2 machine 3 and wdv of the beginning of the year was let's say 10 lakh that, that is the opening value opening wdv of the block as on 1st of april 2023 if you have made additions also then please add it additions during the year or add acquisitions during the year or purchase during the year you can call it anything so i'm saying it acquisitions during the year let's say this year you have purchased m4 and the value of m4 is 4 lakh and also let's say if you have disposed any of the machine any of the machine which was from this block you have disposed it or you have sold it let's say you have received money received on sale or disposal let's say you have sold m2 m2 was one of the old machine you have sold it also so it depends how for how much value you have sold let's say you have sold it for uh, of 3 lakh okay so whatever the amount which you have received you have to subtract it now what is the value now 10 lakh plus 4 lakh minus 3 lakh so this is 11 lakh what you will call it this is wdv at the end for charging depreciation this is wdv at the end for charging depreciation first of all ask whether is there any the value is 11 lakh is there any physical block the answer is yes sir there are physical machines also we have sold only m2 but still we have m1 we have m3 and m4 is also there so we have block so we have, if we have physical value uh, we have physical assets also in this block that there are some machines in this block and also it has value so depreciation will be computed depreciation will be computed so next you have to ask you have to ask whether it contains any asset which is purchased during the year whether this value of 11 lakh contains any asset yes sir it contains m1 it contains m3 and it has m4 this m4 is purchased during the year it was acquired during the year so please keep it separate keep it separate make it split this 11 lakh so whatever is the new asset which you have purchased the latest asset is m4 so it was of 4 lakh rupees okay and the remaining amount is the balancing figure is 7 lakh so what i have done is i have just split it this 11 lakh into two parts so whatever the asset which you have purchased keep it separate and keep the remaining as uh, a separate value first ask this new asset first ask about this new asset we have this in the closing is this used during the year if the answer is the answer is that it is not used if it is this is not used please do not charge any depreciation on 4 lakh please do not charge any depreciation on 4 lakh if it is never put to use if it is mentioned in the question that it is never put to use please do not charge any depreciation on this only charge depreciation on 7 lakh full depreciation how much is the full depreciation 15% so on 7 lakh it would be 15% So it would be one lakh five thousand would be the depreciation for this year, right? If it is mentioned in the question that this asset is also used, if it is mentioned, first case was it was never used. Do not charge depreciation. Second case is if it is used but less than one eighty days. If it is less than one eighty days, let's say it was used from tenth October twenty twenty three. So if we'll count from tenth October, it will be less than one eighty days. So it is used. So we'll charge depreciation, and then you have to ask: Is it used for less than one eighty days? The answer is yes, sir. It is used for less than one eighty days. Please remember that second condition also. It is used in the same year when it is acquired. Yes, sir. This is used in this year and it is acquired also in this year. My second condition also got satisfied. So we will charge half depreciation on this. Please charge half depreciation on this. On four lakh, you will charge. What is the half depreciation? The full depreciation is fifteen. Then you will charge seven point five percent on this value. And on this remaining value, if you have no problem, here you will charge. You will be charging fifteen percent. Right? Got it? now third case third case is that yes sir this asset 4 lakh it is used also 
Tell me for how many days it is used. Let's say it is used for 180 days. 180 days or in fact more than 180 days also. So if it is used for 180 days or more, then on this you will charge full depreciation on 4 lakh. You will charge full depreciation 15 and 7 lakh. There is no problem. You will charge 15% depreciation. Got it? This is how you will charge be charging depreciation. Let's say, let's say if M2 was sold, if they, let's say if M2 was sold for rupees, for example, 12 lakh rupees. Okay, you have sold M2 for 12 lakh. Okay. So what was the opening balance? 10 lakh. Additions during the year is 4. 10 plus 4 is 14. Minus 12. How much is left? You are left with just 2 lakh. First of all, tell me, is there any value? Yes, sir. 2 lakh is the value over here. Are there any physical assets also in this block? Yes, sir. We have just sold M2. We have we have still one M1, M3, and M4 over here. Okay. So you have 2 lakh rupees as the closing value. How you will be charging the depreciation? The same question you will ask. You have first the question was: Are there any physical assets? The answer was yes. Okay, depreciation will be there. Second, please tell me: Does this contain any new asset? The answer is yes, sir. It contains M1, it contains M3, and M4 also. It has new asset M4 also. So please take that value out from here. How much is the value? You have to split this into two parts. Okay, sir. M4 was four lakh. Now you would like to split four lakh out of it, but this is just a um, lesser value, this is just 2 lakh. You have to just segregate M4, whatever the asset which is purchased during the year, you have to segregate that. So it was a 4 lakh, but you cannot take 4 lakh from this 2 lakh figure. So don't worry, whatever the amount is, you take that. Whatever the amount is, you take that. So this is the new as asset was 4 lakh, but we unfortunately we cannot take 4 out of 2. So whatever is the amount is there, we can take that. So 2 lakh is for the new asset and for remaining would be obviously 0. because. There was just 2 lakh, we have taken it towards the new asset and for the old asset, we, we do have old assets, but the value would be 0, okay. Again on this 2 lakh, is it a new asset? The answer is yes. Is it being used during the year? If the answer is no, then there would be no depreciation and on 0, obviously there would be 0 depreciation. If it is used for less than 180 days, okay. Is it used in the same year when it is acquired? Yes, sir. You will charge half depreciation on 2 lakh. If it is used for 180 days or more, you will charge full depreciation, right? Okay. Another case could be, let's say if you have sold M2, if you have sold entire M2, it is being sold, let's say of rupees six, uh, 15 lakh, 15 lakh it is sold. Okay. So it is sold for 15 lakh. Okay. The opening value was just, you have sold just one machine. You still have block. You still have block. 10 lakh was the opening value, 4 lakh is the additions between there, 14 and you have sold it for 15 lakh. So it is a negative amount. WDB at the end of the year cannot be negative amount, right? So you will say nil. You will say nil. Let's say, so you have already spent it 10 lakh rupees, 4 lakh you have spent it during the year. So it is 14 lakh. You have already spent it and now you have recovered 15 lakh. So you have recovered 1 lakh rupees extra. So in that case, Will you be able to charge depreciation? The answer is no. There are block, there are physical assets which exist right now. We have M1, we have M3, we have M4 also. But you cannot charge depreciation because there is no value. We call this a case that block exists at nil value. And in this case, you have actually earned more. You have earned something surplus. How much? 1 lakh. So 1 lakh would be your capital gain. We understand it is a short term capital gain chargeable under section 50 that we will see in our capital gain chapter, right? Got it. Let's say if we have, if we would have sold, if we would have sold M1, M2, M3, M4, all these four assets, entire block we have sold during the year. M4 we have purchased also in this year, but in this year itself, we have sold it entirely. So let's say we have sold it for rupees entire assets are getting sold for rupees 9 lakh. So in that case, sir, opening value was 10 plus 4 is 14, 14 minus 9, 14 minus 9 is 5 lakh. So WDV at the end is 5 lakh. No. Why? Because there are no assets at all. You have sold entire block. So WDV at the end, how much would be? Nil. And in this case, there is a loss because you have already 10 lakh rupees was the opening value, 4 lakh rupees you have already spent it, 14 lakh you have already spent it and you have just recovered 9 lakh out of it. So 5 lakh would be in this case short term capital loss, right? Do you remember that? And let's say if you have other case could be if you have sold, sold entire all the block, entire block is getting sold. Let's say for rupees uh, 19 lakh, 
in that case what would be sir 10 lakh was the opening value 4 lakh would be is the acquisition that is 14 lakh and you have sold it for 19 lakh so there is a 5 lakh rupee surplus is is it wdb at the end of, for the uh, at the end of the year for charging depreciation the answer is no there is no block at all so the wdb at the end would be nil depreciation of course would be nil and here you have gained 5 lakh rupees so it would be sorry short term capital gain under section 50 it would be 5 lakh do you remember that so this was a revision of uh, revision going on for section 32 depreciation okay next part is we also know uh, there is something called as additional depreciation let me discuss additional depreciation first hmm, there it is Okay, let me discuss power generating, then I'll discuss that additional depreciation. Let first, let's come to apportionment of depreciation. Okay. So we want to also understand that there are cases, there are cases when our SSC, when our SSC reconstitutes themselves, they reconstruct themselves. Let's say initially they were partnership firm and now they have converted themselves into a company or initially they were company now they have converted themselves into a llp so in this case if there is any reconstitution or reorganization took place during the year then how will be segregating the depreciation part so first of all you have to calculate your depreciation as if there is no reconstitution or reorganization has happened so first of all first of all calculate your depreciation normally as if there is no reorganization or conversion or restructuring has happened during the year right then whatever the depreciation which you have obtained you have to split it into two parts you have to split it into two parts first is for how many days it will be split in the ratio of the number of days used by predecessor and successor you understand what is predecessor and successor let's say initially it was a company now they have converted into lnp so tell me the number of days the asset is being used by the company and the number of days the asset is being used by the LLP, you have to split that depreciation into two parts, right? This is easy. But please remember, but please remember if any asset is purchased only after conversion, let's say if any asset is purchased in this portion, here you have purchased the asset, even the predecessor has never used it. It was used only by a successor. In that case, case, please do not split the depreciation. Because that depreciation, that asset is never used by the predecessor. If only successor has used the depreciation, uh, that asset, then please do not split such depreciation. That depreciation will go only in for successor. Right? And let's say if any asset is purchased before conversion, it is purchased during this year, but before conversion. So tell me how many number of days is is it will that depreciation should be split the answer is yes because it is purchased before conversion and they have used it also so please tell me the number of days it is used let's say it was used it was purchased before 30 days of conversion it was purchased and put to use before 30 days of conversion and they have used it for 30 days and they have used it for let's say 95 days so please split that depreciation on the asset which is purchased during the year but used by both of them then it should be split right you have to apportion that depreciation between the predecessor and the successor in the in the number of days ratio used by them right so it would be splitted in the ratio of 30 is to 95 so this is how you will do your apportionment of depreciation these all the steps which i have already discussed as mentioned over there so I have already discussed it. if any asset is purchased and used only by the successor, then please do not apportion that depreciation, the entire depreciation because the only successor has used it, please give it entirely to the successor. Right? Okay. You understand I was talking about power generating units. These power generating units can charge depreciation SLM also and WDV also. By default, SLM method is provided to them. By default, SLM method is provided to them. And if they wish, they can say that we would like to uh, choose WDV method also. But they have to express this opinion. They have to express this opinion that we would like to choose WDV method in the very first year when they file their very first return, when they have commenced the business, the first return at the time of filing their first return, they have to choose 
if they would like to go with WDV method. Otherwise, by default, they will be using SLM. So they can choose. It is only one chance which will be given to them. And if they choose WDV method, and in that particular very first year, they cannot come back and they cannot say that now we want, would like to change our method. Because this method, whatever is chosen by them, it is irrevocable, it is irreversible, right? So for entire lifetime of the SAC, they have to take that method only. So the only chance they have is at the time of filing their first return, right? So who can claim this depreciation? The uh, the assessee who are engaged in generation of power, either they are generating power or they are generating and distributing also, they can also come. But if they are not generating, only distributing the power, they cannot claim SLM method. SLM method is only for power generating units. So if you are on only generating, it's okay with us. If you are generating as well as distributing, you are generating, right? So that is also okay with us. But if you are not generating, you are just engaged in distribution. No, SLM method will not be allowed. Only WDV method is allowed for these type of companies, right? And SLM method is also on block of asset. No, it is on individual asset. SLM method is on individual asset. So do we need to remember the rates of the SLM? No, there are no rates mentioned also in your study also, right? So if question will come, they will ask you to, if they are asking you to compute the depreciation as per SLM method, they will give you the rate also in the question itself. So don't, no need to worry about the rate. The rate which we have done of, uh, let's say of building of 10%, 5%, 40% or plan machine 15% and so on, that is for WDV method, right? That were not for SLM method. So SLM method, we don't have to do the rates. If examiner will ask you to compute the depreciation as per SLM, they will give you the rate also in the question itself. So don't worry on that point, right? Option to choose WDV method. If they would like to choose WDV method, obviously then they will come block wise. But yes, the option is available only in the year in which they ha have, uh, in the first year where they have commenced the business by the time they are filing their return, right? Now, this is the favorite question of the examiner. He says, what is the treatment on sale of a uh, power generating asset? If you are selling the power generating asset. So first of all, if you are selling the power generating asset on which SLM method is charged on which if WDB method is charged, then it's the same way. We have already discussed the format that money received on sale would be deducted from that block. But if it is on SLM method where individual asset is uh, on SLM is uh, charged on individual assets, and if you sell this asset, then how you will be treating that? So it's very easy. It's very easy. Uh, I often explain you in my normal classes, in my regular classes, I often explain, explain with the help of a number line. And it, this number line is used in other sections also. So let me explain uh, the same thing over here also, but rather a bit quickly. So you understand what the number line is. If you go on the right hand side of the number line, the number keeps on increasing. If you go to the left side, the number keeps on decreasing, right? So let's say there is an assessee who is engaged in power generating units and they are using SLM method and they have purchased an asset. Let's say a machine, they have purchased it for rupees 10 lakh. And let's say uh, the depreciation as per SLM is rupees 1 lakh each year. Let's say it is 10%, it is 1 lakh each year. We understand it is SLM method, so it will remain uniform. It will remain same for all the years. 1 lakh, 1 lakh, 1 lakh, 1 lakh each. Okay. So uh, tell me, let's say if they have purchased an asset of rupees 10 lakh, the original cost was 10 lakh. Okay. First of all, the original cost of this asset was 10 lakh. And they have already claimed depreciation for three years. They have already used this asset for three years. So first year they have, they must have claimed it one lakh. Second year, one lakh. Third year, they have claimed one lakh, right? So now the written down value, I'm not saying written down value method. I'm saying written down value of the asset is seven lakh because already three years has already elapsed. So one lakh, one lakh, one lakh depreciation is already charged. So how much is the written down value? Seven lakh. So where should I put this seven lakh value? point on this particular number line should I uh, keep it over here on the right side no sir right side you have already explained we already know that it's a number line if we'll go right side the number keeps on increasing if we go left side the number keeps on decreasing so let's say this asset has already been used for three years so one lakh one lakh one lakh the depreciation is total three lakh for the three years and now the WDV of this asset is seven lakh so where should I keep put it on this left hand side so WDV of the asset is 
seven lakh. Right? We have already charged one lakh, one lakh, one lakh as depreciation from our PNL account. Now, examiner will tell you that now we are selling this asset. In the fourth year, we are selling this asset. Okay. How much? For how much you are selling this asset? That that is important. Let's say this asset is getting sold for rupees nine lakh. Tell me. Is it a case of profit or it is a case of a loss? Are you selling your asset on profit or you are selling your asset in loss? Sir, we are selling it on profit because right now the value of the asset is because it's an older asset. The value of the asset is 7 lakh in our books and now we are selling it for 9 lakh. It's a profit area, right? So you understand anything which is sold, if it is sold for any price which is more than 7 lakh, it's a profit area, right? So this is all profit area, correct? And if we'll sell this, a set for less than 7 lakh, it's a loss area. This is a loss area, correct? So if it is getting sold for 9 lakh or 10 lakh or any amount which is more than 7 lakh, it's a profit area. This profit from WDV till original cost, this profit will go in your PGBP. This is your business profit and also taxable under section 41 D business profit, which I'll discuss later, later also. So this is your D business income section 41. And if it is getting sold for more than the original cost, so this area, see this area is capital gain area. If it is, although this, is it visible? Yeah, blue one is also visible, not bad. So this is also, uh, so if you have sold this asset for more than 7 lakh, from 7 to 10, it's PGVP and more than 10 is capital gain. Capital gain under section 50A, 50 also, that, that I'll discuss in capital gain also. So let's say if this asset is sold in the fourth year for rupees, I'll tell you that if it is sold for rupees, let's say uh, 15 lakh. Okay. If it is sold for 15 lakh, so sir, it's a profit because right now the asset WDB is 7 lakh. We have sold it for 15 lakh. So uh, more or less it's 8 lakh rupees profit, right? So from 7 to 10, that is 3 lakh will be your PGBP. So 3 lakh would be your PGBP under section 41. Right. And over and above your orig original cost would be your capital gain. Sir, we have sold it for 15 lakh and over and above 10 lakh, that is 5 lakh would be the capital gain. So this is 3 plus 5 is 8 lakh would be the total profit. 3 lakh would be business profit, 5 lakh would be the capital gain. But, but, but please remember, you understand capital gain also, although we have not done the revision, but you know what is ca how capital gain is computed. Capital gain is computed by uh, taking full value of consideration is 15 lakh and cost of acquisition is 10 lakh. But you understand if it is uh, more than three years, then you have to do the index also. Let's say if it is short term, then it's fine. 15 minus 10, 5 lakh would be the capital gain, short term capital gain. But if it is more than three years in this case, then it would be a long term capital gain. And in that case, you have to index this cost also, 10 lakh rupees. So let's say the index value comes to 10.8 lakh. So 15 minus 10.8, 15 minus 10.8 in that case, 4.2 lakh would be your capital gain, long term capital. So it depends upon short term or long term. If it is short term, then obviously you can mind, uh, deduct from 15, you can deduct 10. But if it is long term, from 15 plus deduct index cost, right? So this is covered under section 50A, we'll also see. Okay, so we have done this profit area. So uh, above 7 till 10, till original cost, it is it would be PGBP. Over and above your 10 lakh, it would be your capital gain. And it depends upon long term, short term that you have to index it also, index the cost also, you don't have to index it if it is short term. If it is getting sold for less than 7 lakhs, so it's a loss, right? It's a loss. So this loss, if it is getting sold for 5 lakh, it is getting sold for 4 lakh, anything which is less than 7 lakh, it's a loss. And we call it as a terminal depreciation. We call this loss and this is allowed under section 32 itself as terminal depreciation. So this is terminal depreciation, which you can claim in this year when you are selling this asset. Let's say if you have sold this asset for rupees 4 lakh, so how much is the loss? 3 lakh is the loss. It is called as terminal depreciation. That also I have mentioned it over here. See, this is original cost, this is WDV. If you are selling more than WDV, it's a profit area. From WDV till original cost, it is PGBP. And, and if it is more than original cost, this is capital gain. And if it is less than WDV, it's a loss area. We call it terminal depreciation. It, it is allowed under section, sorry, 32, right? So this was important. And I tell you uh, in power generating also, SLM is charged on uh, block of assets or on individual assets. If you are using if you are using SLM method, individual assets. But yes, that will remain the same. 
either if it is used for 180 days or more full depreciation if it is used for 180 uh, less than 180 days if it is used for less than 180 days and acquired and used in the same year half depreciation and if it is never used no depreciation that will remain the same right okay additional depreciation are again important but please remember you know that additional depreciation is only given to those assessee who are engaged in manufacturing if it uh, this SAC is uh, running their own profession, if they are having their own profession or if they are having a trading concern, in that case, additional depreciation is not allowed. Additional depreciation is only allowed for manufacturing SAC. Second important thing, if the SAC, if the SAC is following default tax regime, default new tax regime, that is 115 BAC, additional depreciation is not allowed. Please remember. If the assessee is following default tax regime, then no additional depreciation. There is no such thing like additional depreciation in default scheme. Right? Will you be able to remember? Easy. If the assessee is following optional tax regime, if the assessee is following optional tax regime, then additional depreciation can come if the assessee is a manufacturing assessee. So we understand the additional depreciation rate is 20% of the original cost. And if it is used for less than 180 days, then 10% in this year and 10% remaining 10% in the next year. And it should be plant machinery that plant machinery should be installed in your factory not in any office not in any uh, uh, um, guest house or so it should be only in the factory right in your production process it should be a new it should not be second hand correct it should not be second hand it should not be vehicles it should not be vehicles ships or aircraft right and it should not be any such asset where 100 percent reduction is allowed in the very first year so these are the conditions which you should remember about additional depreciation Unabsorbed depreciation. Although unabsorbed depreciation topic is uh, something related to set off and carry forward, but you should know what is unabsorbed depreciation. See, section 32 says that whatever is the depreciation, whatever depreciation which you calculate as per section 32, it is allowed in the year. In the current year, depreciation is allowed in the same year, provided there are sufficient profits. If the profits are not sufficient, if the profits are not sufficient, so the depreciation which remains unabsorbed, which remains unabsorbed should be set off from any other head or it will be carried uh, forward to next years right so what is unabsorbed depreciation the depreciation of the year which could not be set off in that year itself due to the profits were not sufficient in that case it is called unabsorbed depreciation and if unabsorbed depreciation is there you can either set off it from any other head except salary and if it is could not be set off you can carry it forward and for how many years you can carry it forward for unlimited number of years you can carry it forward right so unabsorbed depreciation can be set off from any income other than salary and it can be carried forward also for unlimited number of years. Order of set off, this is something related to set off, then this we will see in set off chapter, but still uh, because this is a revision, you have already, uh, you must have already covered set off chapter also. So the order of set off should be, first of all, we charge current year depreciation. First of all, all the things which are related to current year, it should be charged current year depreciation. Then if there are any brought forward business losses, we will set off that also because you understand brought forward business losses has a uh, life of only eight years. So we will give priority to them and then to unabsorbed depreciation of the last years, right? So first of all, current year depreciation, then, then you have brought forward losses of last years because it has limited life. And then if there is any property available, then we take our unabsorbed depreciation, which is related to past years. Right. So the, although this was a part of set off, but I think you should remember this. Okay. Next section is section 35. I think we should stop here and we will discuss from 35 onwards. We'll discuss in our next lecture. Till then, thank you so much. Bye-bye and take care.